from disabling memory integrity to using a custom power plan, this is how pros optimize Windows to improve gaming performance and reduce input delay. And yes, this optimization guide will benefit any PC or laptop, so if it does help out, please consider liking and subscribing. Now to begin, it's always a good idea to have a restore point. Even though I doubt you'll need it, it's better to be safer than sorry. For most people, around 10 gigabytes should be more than enough. After that, it'll create one in case you do need to roll back for any reason. Now you can head into the settings into privacy and security, windows security, device security. Under core isolation details, you will find memory integrity, which I like to disable. Now, yes, this is a security feature. However, it is very CPU heavy. So if you do disable it, you will get more FPS. However, if you are paranoid, you can just keep it on if you like. If you're careful about what you download, you should be fine. But at least while gaming, you should have this off. Also inside threat protection, I like to go ahead and disable periodic scanning as this can actually occur when you're gaming. And as you can imagine, that can cause stutters. It's something you should be scanning manually, not automatically. After that, I go into general and I deselect all of these. And then I like to disable this one right here. Next, we've got accessibility in the visual effects where you can turn off the transparency effects. And as you can imagine, it turns off those translucent effects, which could give you a slight FPS boost. There's also animation effects as well if you don't want those. From there, open up the run box and type in system properties performance.exe and this will open up the visual effects tab. If you click on adjust for best performance, you'll notice it unchecks all the set ends. But what we need to do is tick these five essential ones, which I'm doing on screen right now to get the basic functionality from Windows. It's just more stripped down without all the fancy animations and stuff like that. Next in display, make sure scaling is at 100%, then head into advanced settings where you should then make sure you're using the highest refresh rate possible, so the one at the top. I also recommend that you go into your monitor settings and see if there's an overclock option. With mine, luckily there is, and it goes all the way up to 280 hertz. In addition to that, you may have another setting called response time or overdrive, where I recommend you also set that to the highest one possible. When doing this though, I think it's a great idea to use the Blurbusters UFO test to see if there's any sort of overshooting or ghosting. If you do notice any, you can simply reduce the setting. Back in display, if you scroll down to where it says graphics, change default graphics settings. If you see this setting called hardware accelerated GPU scheduling, you want to turn it on to reduce system latency and improve performance. And then if you play full screen windowed mode like Peterbot does, you want to make sure you enable optimizations for windowed games, as this will reduce latency once you do restart your PC. Oh, and if you click on browse here and find the client itself, this is the name of it. You'll see that it's on the list. If you click options and select high performance, this will prioritize your GPU over integrated graphics, which as you can imagine you want to do. If you scroll down slightly, you'll find audio. Just head into sound, scroll down till you see more sound settings. A sound box will then appear. In communications, firstly, make sure that this is set on do nothing. After, head back into playback. You should find your exact headphones with a little tick here. Just click on properties. Inside here, I go into levels, make sure this is at 100%. I then go into advanced and make sure this is at the best studio quality. So that right there is 480. But do make sure that both exclusive modes are ticked right here. I also don't recommend spatial sound. Going down from there, you'll find mouse. Head into mouse pointer, then mouse again. Additional mouse settings. Inside the mouse properties, go into point options and please ensure that this option, enhance pointer precision, is turned off as this will disable mouse acceleration, which you do not want to use. From there, there you can go into your mouse's software and set up a high DPI. The reason why is because it has been proven to reduce pixel skipping and lower latency. However, it is still personal preference, so it is up to you. As for pollen rate, you've probably heard that it is great to use a higher pollen rate. The problem is though, if your pollen rate is too high, this can cause issues like FPS drops and stutters. So because of that, I don't recommend anything more than 2000 hertz. I do believe the most consistent one is 1000. It's what pretty much everyone uses, including the pro Peter Bob. Also, if you use a wireless mouse, which I'm assuming a lot of you do now, please, please, please do ensure that you have the dongle set up properly and it isn't too far from the mouse. You want to keep it as close as possible to reduce any sort of interference, which can in turn cause input delay. Try to avoid RGB effects on your mouse and keyboard as that's also been proven to slightly drop your FPS. Next, you want to go into gaming under game bar. Make sure this is disabled as I've heard that it can actually cause stutters. To stop it from popping up, just head into it. Then in the settings, 
settings at the top, just uncheck this setting here. An optional thing that people do is to go into the PowerShell run as admin and paste in this command where it will get rid of it completely, although I don't really think it's that necessary. You've also got captures too. I like to go ahead and turn this off and we've got game mode. This is something I really like and I do use now these days as I feel like it does make my frame rate more stable. Inside the app section under installed apps, you want to go through all of these and uninstall any that you don't use. So for example, Microsoft OneDrive, I do not use that so it will be getting uninstalled. However, don't go too crazy with this. You only want to uninstall something that you know what it does. Like when it comes to these files right here, the Visual C++, um, you definitely don't want to get rid of these as they'll have some sort of purpose with some software. Furthermore, if you do use an app but you don't want it running in the background, you can click on the three dots there, go into advanced options and then you can basically stop this from running in the background via clicking on never and this will also lower your overall process count. Oh, another thing in apps, if you go into startup, you can also go through this and turn off apps that you don't want starting with Windows. Again, don't go crazy as for some stuff you should leave this on. From there, we're going to type in services and basically what we're going to do in here is disable some of the services to lower our overall processes in Windows. It'll basically be stuff that has no sort of use whatsoever and you will rarely use, like the wallet service right here. Now, if you do actually use this, you obviously don't want to do it, but if you literally just right click on it, go into its properties, then head into the startup type and disable it. That's literally all you need to do to disable a process slash service. After that, a thing you can do is head into the task manager and look in performance. To your surprise, the uptime may be very, very high, like some of these examples are on screen, like some are just ridiculous. And this is because of a fast start feature. To fix this, head into power options, click change settings that are unavailable and simply uncheck this option. Now, when you shut down your PC, your PC will fully shut down and the uptimer will be reset. Next, in the network settings, you want to click on advanced settings, click on your main network adapter. So for my system, this would be my ethernet connection. It should give you like a drop down. In here, you want to go into more adapter options. Then you want to make sure that the IPv4 box is ticked. And then you want to go into its properties where you can now change your DNS server, which is something Epic Games actually recommend. Inside here, you can use the most popular one, which is Google's DNS server. Or you can go with the second most popular one, which is Cloudflare's server. For myself, I ended up going with Google's one, which is 8888 and then 8844. Because after I did test it via going into the CMD, then type in ping, followed by Google's primary DNS address. As you can see from the results, it turned out to be slightly faster than the other one. So that's what I ended up using. Additionally, after you do this, you can try this process of flushing your DNS to improve connections to servers. After that, to further optimize your network, you can head back into the adapter options, but this time click on that configure button. We firstly want to go under power management and uncheck both of these power saving options right here. Make sure to actually uncheck the second one first, followed by the first one. And after you have unchecked both of those, you can go into advanced. Inside here, the following settings I am going to change can improve your throughput performance, but they are optional. If for some reason they do have a negative impact on you, you can just revert them back to default. I'm starting off with all the default settings. So for the first one here, that's the ARP offload, or rather all the offload settings, I like to go ahead and disable them. As for flow control, I know this does sound kind of like counterintuitive, but I've read that the TCP itself has its own built-in flow control mechanism. So what I like to do is go ahead and disable this setting. Scrolling down, we've got another offload setting. Like I mentioned before, I like to disable all of these. A jumbo packet, ensure that's disabled. I believe it is by default. Under that, we've got some more uh, offload settings. I like to go ahead and disable. There's another one here that's NS offload. Get that disabled. And scrolling down, we've got some more offload settings. Get all of these disabled like so. Got the last one right there. Disable that. And finally, for these wake on settings, I like to go ahead and disable all of these. But like I mentioned, guys, these are optional. If for some reason you do have like any sort of negative effects, go ahead and set them back to default. It's that easy to fix it. Next, in system, head into notifications. I recommend the do not disturb setting to prevent any distractions. You can then deselect all of these three settings. Then go into power. For most people, they keep this option on balanced as it keeps your CPU clock speed at a normal base rate. And it is the best of both worlds, really. However, you can go into the CMD and paste in this command right here, which will create a ultimate power plan. To enable that, you need to go into the edit power plan settings where you you can actually select it. I only recommend the use of this power plan if you are gaming. If you're not gaming, you should use balanced. Next, inside the Windows updates, I do actually recommend keeping Windows semi up to date, but you need to do it when you want to. Don't let
like this automatically do it for you. That's why I like to pause my updates. I like to unselect this. I like to then go into advanced options, have all of these unselected, then go into delivery optimization and uncheck this one right here. For further general PC maintenance, you can go into disk cleaner and select your drive. I usually like to take every single box like every two weeks or something and you can see how much space you can actually gain from doing this. But remember when deleting stuff, you need to make sure you know what each one of these do, but you can just simply Google it to find out. While doing that, it's also not a bad idea to open up a run box and actually clear out your temporary files. There's three different ones you can do in total, but the main ones I focus on are temp and prefetch. Next, for the Nvidia optimizations, just like the pros, it's really important to use the latest drivers. These days, you'll not really find much downside. In my experience, I've downloaded the latest driver within a week, and honestly, it's been really stable and I've had no issues. However, for a lot of people, when they're installing a fresh driver, they'll use this tool on screen. It's a free app that removes Nvidia bloatware by allowing you to customize and select what driver components you want installed, removing certain bloatware like this on screen. Another thing I've seen more and more pro players do is use the Nvidia overclock tool. To try it for yourself, you need to get the Nvidia app, then just follow these steps which are on screen right now. That'll then initiate the latest update to download and install, where you'll notice a new section called system. Inside there, under the performance section, you'll notice a new automatic overclock feature that allows you to overclock your GPU in one single click, which Nvidia state that once you do enable it, they'll perform a scan to test your graphics card's capabilities over the course of 10 to 20 minutes. They recommend that you leave your PC idle while this is performed. Then once the scan has finished and your GPU has been overclocked, you can expect similar results to this on screen, where you can see you'll get improved clock speeds and in turn higher FPS. With minimal risk too, as Nvidia state that automatic tuning won't damage your GPU, nor will it void your warranty. The worst thing that can happen really is your PC becoming unstable, which if it does, you can simply deactivate the overclock by literally just unselecting it and it'll go back to normal. Next, you want to head into the Nvidia control panel, go into manage 3D settings, and you want to copy all of my settings that I set up in this video on screen in the manage 3D section. Aside from that though, if you do then select your main game and monitor, then select full screen and make sure a GPU is selected with the highest refresh rate possible. Oh, another thing that pros tend to do is increase their digital vibrance. This makes the game colors pop a lot more, so they're a lot more like brighter and just overall vibrant. Next is RAM Overclock, which is actually called different names by different manufacturers. It's essentially a really easy method to get the actual speeds advertised on your RAM, because by default, these are not the actual speeds. So you need to then go into your BIOS and actually select the setting. You'll know if it's worked if you actually get the speeds you were supposed to get. To make sure that it's worked, you can go into your Windows settings and actually see your RAM details over speed. And from there, you should see that it's been boosted and you can imagine that's great for performance. Next, we have Timer Res, which you might have heard is this really old program that allows you to change the default Windows Timer Res, which in turn can slightly boost your FPS and lower your input delay. However, the results of this do seem to be dependent on what your system is. So it's one of them where you should try it for yourself. All you need to do is click on that maximum button and it'll change your Timer Res, but it can be annoying because you need to do this after every restart. If this does nothing for you, or if you do encounter any sort of issues, you can just simply delete it. And finally, I want to end this with a quick system check via going into the CMD, where you can paste in this command that I'll have in the description. And what this does is it checks your entire PC for incorrect, changed, or corrupt Windows files. And if any corruption does appear, for myself, as you can see, there's actually none, you can then paste in this command that I'll also have in the description. What this will do is it'll go through and actually find all the missing slash incorrect corrupt Windows files and actually replace them for you. But there's no need to run that if no corruption has been detected. I was just using this as an example. Oh, another thing as well, after running those checks, I like to paste in this command and it'll basically do a quick scan to make sure all the issues were fixed. If a video did help, please drop a like and subscribe for more. Also, please consider using my creator code in the item shop if you do buy that battle pass as that helped me out a ton.